This is the Soulfully Casual Podcast hosted by Matty Ice. And now, your host, Matty Ice. Hello, everyone, and happy Wednesday. Welcome back to the Soulfully Casual Podcast brought to you by Matty Ice Media. And a big shout out to Matty Ice Media for hosting and promoting. We really appreciate it. I'm your host, Matty Ice, and it's a lovely day down here. Even if the weather is not great where you are, it can still be a lovely day. Um, However, the climate in this country is reaching sort of an interesting point. Um, Last week, there was a shooting, and I can't remember exactly where it happened, but eight people were killed. Uh, Six of them were Asian American, and the shooter, of course, was a white male. It typically ends up being that way. When I say we're reaching a point, um, race relations in this country seem to be reaching some sort of a precipice, and I don't necessarily mean in a good way. I feel as if we are reaching a point that um, very soon we are going to have to address it on a very mass level. And I think 2020 spent a lot of time focusing on the, uh, you know, the narrative of how black Americans have been treated in this country, not just African Americans, but black Americans in general, because there are a lot of black uh americans here who came from other countries who are not necessarily native to this country now cleveland is one of them uh he is he was not born here but his parents came here and so he became a citizen uh upon you know upon coming here um but we focused a lot about that and rightfully so there has been a lot of news over the last year of police brutality related to black americans in this country and the racial disparities that exist in other avenues Uh, So, you know, local businesses, equity sharing, things like that. That is very important. I said in an episode last week about how it is extremely important to be identifying these areas in which we are deficient. Identifying these areas in which inequalities exist, inappropriate behaviors exist, things of this nature. If we don't do that, we're never going to be able to grow. We're never going to be able to evolve over time and become a better species. Uh, It's really important. But the shooting last week really highlighted the fact that it is not just black Americans who go through this or even Hispanic Americans who go through this type of, uh, of behavior. Asian Americans have been getting this behavior for a very long time in this country. And the last year has sort of highlighted that in many, many ways. Um, for those of you who you know have not been listened, I've talked a lot about the pandemic on this show. Uh, being a new parent in a pandemic has been interesting, to say the least. Uh, For the most part, as a new parent, you're struggling to adapt. And I know that our friends Renee and Scott can relate to this right now as they now have a two-month-old at home and it's it's an adaptation to your life. It's an adaptation you choose, but it's an adaptation nonetheless. You're trying to figure out who you are as parents, who you are as humans, and trying to navigate all of the complexities of being a parent. Because as I've said, they don't really give you an instruction booklet on how to do it. They hand you the baby, say, good luck, we might see you in a couple years, and uh, you're kind of on your own. And that's the way that it is. Um, But in the pandemic time, you know, the world outside of your uh, adaptation to being a parent was also crazy. How do we adapt our lives to that while also adapting to other things that are going on? As the pandemic raged on, uh, and especially in the early, early periods, I'm thinking like March until about June, when we really didn't have a lot of answers for the questions out there. Nobody really knew what to do. Nobody really knew what this disease was, where it originated, how to conduct themselves during this, you know, people not seeing loved ones, loved ones dying behind walls, not being able to see their, you know, be with them as they're they're passing away, uh, watching a loved one die over iPads and so forth. And I think what ended up happening was there was a natural unfortunately i hate using that word but it does feel like it's natural for a lot of people too natural to me like it it wasn't naturally something that i did but i know a lot of americans felt this way there was a lot of hatred poured toward asian americans because the um, idea was that this originated from china and that it was either a mistake or a purposeful thing that happened and it has caused a lot of grief for a lot of people it also didn't help that our president at the time was calling it the, the China virus or something like that. And over the last year, well, there really hasn't been a lot of coverage on this sort of hatred. There have been stories here or there. The most prominent one that I heard was Jeremy Lin, who is an NBA basketball player, talking about what he was called during games, especially when he was playing in the G League, which is like the, the developmental league for the NBA, so to speak. 
um and he would be called corona or coronavirus things of this nature and if he who is somebody is a prominent basketball player right he's at the top of his profession for the most part if he is getting that kind of treatment imagine what kind of treatment regular people are getting um even just today looking at the news hearing about the treatment that specifically elderly asian americans are receiving people coming up and shoving them to the ground punching them inexplicably calling them horrible horrible things blaming them for the virus that we're all trying to get around and it just it's it's so unsettling folks it really is like i've talked a lot about you know how we can get around racial bias as it relates to the race relations of black people and even hispanic people to an extent because that's what's been in the news and i've even said like the capital i don't want to necessarily call it an insurrection because that has a very specific um you know meaning to it but when those folks those trump supporters were, were storming the capital um i said i hypothesized that had they been non-white people as a majority i think the outcome would have been different but one of the things that this shooting has really done for me is made me look back at well have i not considered how other races have been treated because maybe i myself haven't seen it happen right like i have heard stories from black friends that i have about ways that they have been treated unfairly compared to white folks here but i have not heard this from asian american friends and you know looking at it do i really have a lot of them and the answer to that is really no and so my exposure to this topic has been very limited it's been very uh, you know, that this is, I don't want to call it a blind spot for me because it's not as if it's something that I've actively gone out of my way to avoid. You know, I talked in a very previous episode, like long ago about growing up and not being taught about what somebody looked like, not being taught that race was anything that we needed to be concerned about. And that in some aspects, in some way, it made me colorblind. And that's also a different issue. I don't consider this being colorblind to me. I consider this as not really having a lot of exposure to these types of issues. But now seeing that there is still a lot of percolating and underlying hatred for Asian Americans because there is still blame being associated with them, made me look back at the history of where we are. Uh, the, the biggest thing that I can remember uh, in terms of what I learned in school and history were those Japanese internment camps. So anybody who is you know unfamiliar with that, back in World War II, obviously... The United States was sort of on the outskirts of being involved in World War II. We knew it was going on uh, specifically with Nazi Germany, you know, taking over Europe, um, the Holocaust and things of this nature. And other countries had sort of come to, I don't want to say the aid of Germany, but come to be allies with them. And that's where the Axis powers came. And Japan was one of those countries, right? Like um, everybody knows Pearl Harbor. And that one incident of you know, the Japanese uh, Air Force essentially attacking Pearl Harbor and killing so many people, a sucker punch, so to speak. That started a very similar uh, outpouring of hatred toward Asian Americans in this country. And what that, manuf what that manifested itself in were these internment camps, which were essentially similar to the concentration camps, uh, just, it, I believe, without the overt killing of them the way that the, the Nazis killed uh, Jewish people. I don't know that for sure. I haven't done a ton of research to know exactly what these internment camps were, but just the idea that Asian American uh, folks were targeted specifically and taken away from their homes, taken away from their families, their neighborhoods, their friends, just because they were Asian American or Japanese, right? Um, yeah, that that is not something that we have we have gotten rid of. I mean, it's amazing to me. How many stereotypes exist for asian americans specifically we just had an incident with dr seuss depicting asian americans in a very caricature way and while i've spoken about the idea of not necessarily wiping out everything that makes a mistake again recognizing those inappropriate uh caricatures is very very important and it plays right into this and it's amazing to me that there is a person or persons out there who can blame what we're going through on somebody just because of the way that they look like i just can't even fathom this i can't even get you know my wrap my head around it because you uh, to me i in living where we live it's a fairly diverse area depending on where you know you go even in northern virginia there are towns as part of these counties where there's a lot more diversity uh, my wife and i lived in a townhouse uh, a few towns over and we were surrounded by basically 
all non-white people. And now living in the neighborhood that we live in, it is predominantly white people. It just happens to be the you know demographic makeup of where people end up. And that people end up there for various different reasons, a lot of them socioeconomic and so forth, you know, whatever they can afford. Uh, people like to be around people that, you know, they can identify with. Uh, people also get excited for people they identify with. And I talked about, you know, black people being excited when they see the first of, you know, Kamala Harris being vice president is an extremely monumental occasion because for a lot of people, someone that looks like them can identify with them and has gone through the struggles that they've gone through has made it to a place of prominence, has broken through the ceiling, as it were. But with Asian, you know, with Asian folks and Asian Americans in this country, uh, it's been a lot of subtle hatred, a lot of subtle racism. And I don't know if it comes out of, you know, socioeconomic areas, where people are from. I, I don't want to necessarily place an assumption on the person who gunned this person down, but I would venture a guess that they were not a Joe Biden supporter, because most of the people that I know who supported this current president or voted for this current president uh, haven't really said anything to that effect. They haven't felt this, they haven't overtly shown this hatred toward not just you know, Asian Americans, but also um, any other person of color or person of ethnicity. And I just feel as if, you know, this person is being treated completely differently than if it were another way around. So here's a case in point. So listening to the like press conference that the police of the area are giving uh basically in in short they said well this person was just having a bad day and i immediately stopped myself and thought wait 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 wait! i don't understand this at all i just don't understand how you could chalk it up to having a bad day they in they you know specifically planned and plotted to go in there and shoot people and it wasn't as if they just had some like revolver pistol they were ready to go it's unbelievable the way that we can do this but not just for Asian Americans, too. Like, there's another story in the, the news right now related to the women's NCAA tournament. And it just highlights how we still have a long way to go. So for the women in the NCAA tournament, they show up to these sites. So what it seems as if the, the NCAA has tried to do is create, like, two or three sites that all of these teams are at to basically make it as less travel as possible, less exposure to people, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, the men show up in Indianapolis and they have, you know, luxury uh, accommodations, basically. Really nice hotels, uh, a full gym that they can work out in to keep themselves crisp, to keep themselves ready to go. And the women show up and they have basically a fold-out uh, table with some towels on it, some hand sanitizer, and a weight tree. So if you've never been to the gym, what I say by a weight tree is they basically have like six uh, different weights on them. And that's about it. They have like five you know, five or 10 pounds, and it goes up to maybe like 40 pounds. So the women are given a weight tree in order to do their business. They, like the men, are at the highest point in their particular field at this point. Even though it's amateur athletics, they have put a lot of time and effort and sweat, as Cleveland would say, blood equity into this, or sweat equity, to make this happen. They want to win just as much as the dudes do. They are putting just as much, if not more, work into it. And I'll be honest with you, the work that they're putting in is probably at, they're more the underdog than the men are. They have a lot less of the resources than men do. Even, you know, UConn women's basketball, which is at the pinnacle of the sport, it has been a powerhouse for two decades now. They still don't get the same resources that the men do. And the men aren't winning nearly as much. I mean, we've had this discussion with the U.S. national teams in soccer. The men are still getting paid more than the women, and the men didn't even make the World Cup this last time whereas the women have brought home World Cup titles on the regular. Um, and it's just unbelievable. Like, it's unbelievable to me that this idea can come out of somebody's office. And couple that with the shooting, the targeting of Asian Americans. Where are we, folks? Like, what are we doing? I just don't understand it. I don't understand how people can not think and use their head when it comes to other people. Like, a virus that comes from China, I totally understand it, right? I totally understand that there's frustration there. It's caused so many people so much heartache. Between 500 and 600,000 people have lost their lives. We don't know how many people would have lost their lives without COVID-19. Some of them would have, and I recognize that. But it's brought so much, uh, so much sadness to people. Even people who got it and survived long-haul COVID 
having symptoms for the longest time. I mean, it doesn't matter where you are in society, even if you have the best medical care, there are people who have long-term, you know, symptoms of it, that they're going to have to live with this for who knows how long. Who knows if some people will ever be right. I can understand that you might say that I can't believe China, the country, was responsible for this and didn't take responsibility. I think that's a fair criticism. But to bring that criticism to your own neighborhoods, to your own homes, and look at people that just because they look like they might be from China means that you need to, you know, show hatred, violence toward them, blame. Like, I don't understand it. And if you're listening and you're one of those people, you really need to go back to the drawing board in human decency. You need to think about how you treat people. Why are you, why are you doing that? What is it about somebody that just looks like a country that is the representative of this disease? Or if you're the person who signed off on the women's NCAA tournament accommodations, what the hell is wrong with you? How does that even make it out of your office without a laugh, without a come back to me with something better? And here's the kicker. The vice president of the NCAA is a friggin' female. How, 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 how on earth are you not even aware that this is something that took place? For it to even get to the execution stage where they walk in and see those laughable and I'll be honest, insulting accommodations. What is that? How do you even sign off on that? How? How does anybody even say that that's okay? How does anybody even think in practice before we even get to the execution part that that is something that should even make it to the light of day? And the fact that it did and the fact that it's getting the attention is just, is a good thing, right? And they should feel as ashamed as they are. And honestly, the way that they have treated the shooter of these uh, Asian American folks, uh, he should be treated so much more poorly than he actually is. I get it. Everybody has rights, right? But they chalk it up to him having a bad day. The shooters in Charleston get the perp walk. They get essentially trapped. We see this all the time. Black folks who quote unquote commit a crime are dead. They did, well, they didn't comply. Well, let me tell you something. This white guy shot and killed eight people. Is there anything about that that says compliance to you? Certainly not for me. So why does he get a pass for having a bad day? So why does he get to be treated like a normal human being? Get placed in handcuffs lightly, not look like he's beat up. Honestly, I wish that the mugshot I saw was his face looking like raw hamburger meat. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Because if that was one of my loved ones, Hell, even if it was a friend, even if it was somebody in my neighborhood who I found out was involved with that, who died, who lost their life, I'd want to kick the shit out of that guy. And he deserves everything coming to him. But you know what? I have a feeling the legal system will let him down. I have, will let us down, I mean. I have a feeling that he's going to get some soft sentence because of some lawyer who's going to somehow make it out to be that. Well, he had a bad day. I wish it was different, right? I wish the narrative was so different. But I want you to think about this. I want you to think about these two scenarios, one of which is lethal. The other one is not. The other one is insulting. But they both highlight a fact that we have a long way to go. We need to be thinking more about our fellow human beings. We need to be thinking more about what our feelings are toward them. Why do we have these feelings? Why do we associate Asian Americans with the coronavirus? The coronavirus is something of science, it's something of nature, something that could have come out of anywhere. It could have come out of nature itself. I mean, look at all of the diseases we have fought and been beat over the years, right? Polio, measles, mumps, rubella, things that we get vaccines for that we know are going to be eradicated. They didn't all necessarily come out of a country or a lab. They just are. Ebola is another good example, right? AIDS, these things are, they get spread by humans they are not necessarily all started by humans. And to think about the idea that we're going to associate a specific demographic of people with these things and also not even just have hatred toward them, but act out on that hatred, ending lives, right? It's sad and we need to change it. We need to be better about this. And not only that, but we need to recognize that it's their problem as well as our problem in the sense that we need to highlight it more. We need to be more aware of these things. We didn't talk enough about the Asian American hatred over the last year, about these feelings that a lot of people had, their actions that they took on them. We need to put those up on the forefront too. I wanna to see more talk about all of the races that go through these things and why they're different, how they're different, and also how we can be part of the solution. 
I've talked a lot about that recently. And honestly, I, I know you're probably tired of it, but it's what's in front of us. This is where we're living now. Not everything can all be fun. Not everything can all be laughs and giggles. Women are being treated poorly. Asian Americans are being treated poorly. Blacks, Hispanics are being treated poorly. And it is. And there's a lot of white people being treated poorly in some of these socioeconomic areas of the country. We're letting our own citizens down. We're leaving people behind. And I myself can be part of the problem sometimes because I live in a bubble. I make a good salary. I have a job. I don't have many impediments in my life at all, if any. And there's a way in which I can direct that. I talked about that last episode. Redirecting your frustrations, redirecting your energies towards something else and becoming the underdog and slaying the Goliath. We can do it, folks. We really, really can. Just before you have a thought, before you have an action on a thought, Take a moment to think about why you're having it. Take a moment to think before you act. It's really, really important because we as a human race need to get there together. We're going to do it. Don't worry. But for all of the women listening, for any of the Asian Americans listening, I'm sorry for what you're going through. I'm sorry that you are being insulted, denigrated, killed, and, and you know treated less than everybody else. You deserve better. And hopefully I can be a part of the solution and make it better for you. Um, thank you for tuning in this week. Again, I want to thank everybody at Matty Ice Media, all the creators uh, for being a part of this, this network. We're doing great things. We're building things brick by brick. Uh, connection as always. If you don't like what I said or you have gone through what I've said, I want to hear about it. Soulfully Casual Podcast on Instagram and soulfully.casual at gmail.com. Uh, I hope everybody's happy and safe out there. Please stay safe. Uh, We are almost through this, and I know we'll get there together, um, and I will talk to you all on Friday. Have a great day.